So welcome guys to another battle cast. This time I'm playing the Tomb Kings again <laughs> and I'm facing up against the High Elves. And you can already see the High Queen Kalida in the background. And the High Queen Kalida is in my opinion a quite, yeah, not quite, but a little under, little bit underrated I would say. Of course you have Ark and the Black with the competitive law of death. But if you need a um, duelist, the High Queen Kalida is very, very good. So we have a weapon strength of 450, what is quite good. The amount of armor piercing damage is over 300, what is very good. The melee stats are also very good. We have 65 melee attack and 60 uh, melee defense, very good stats. And she causing poison attacks. Also, the amount of armor is quite good. We have 90 over here. And you can deploy this combination with the Necro Serpent for about um, 2,000 credits. Of course, it's not really cheap, but it is okay. And as I said, she's, she's really good in, in um, purposes like sniping out enemy lords or um, large entities and all that stuff. So, uh, And also on the Necro Serpent, really steady. So really, if you need a duelist, uh, sh this lady here is very good. Then we have the Ushapti with Great Bow, nothing new under the sun. Then we, I brought Tomb Kings with Halberts. These guys are really important in my opinion in this matchup because these uh, Tomb Gods with Halberts causing um, uh, armor piercing damage. And you need a lot of armor piercing damage against the High Elves. So these guys of course are also anti-large, but they are also performing superior against infantry units. And I'm not sure how's the performance against Thrust Masters of Hoet, how long they are able to hold the line against them, I'm not sure. But against White Lines of Grace and stuff like that, they they should be able to hold the line for some time. So I think two groups of Tomb Guards with Halberts are, are not wrong in this matchup. As I said, because this is the only, only unit uh, of, the tomb, uh, of the Tomb Kings who, uh, which is causing a lot of uh, armor piercing damage. Then we have Neokan Warriors on each side. Of course, these guys causing nearly no armor piercing damage. So I'm not sure how's the performance over here. In the middle, we have Skeleton Spearman. And of course, you can leave out the Neokan Warriors maybe and fill everything up with Skeleton Spearman. Skeleton Spearman, always cheap. You can bring a lot of them and at least they are able to hold the line for some time against the enemy infantry. And also performing, of course, superior against large entities. Then we have a Tomb Scorpion and I think um, Tomb Scorpion or Ushabti are really important in this matchup because uh, you need a lot of armor piercing damage uh, against the high uh, against the high elf infantry. So um, and as I said the Tomb King infantry uh, don't cause too much AP damage so you need in addition monsters like the Tomb Scorpion over here. Then I brought a Necro Sphinx. It's not really necessary in my opinion in this matchup, but a Necro Sphinx is uh, always strong and can uh, perform superior, especially of course against uh, dragons and all that stuff. But as I said, it's not necessary. Then I have two Skeleton Horsemen and um, of course these guys are completely s very squishy and I'm not sure how the performance in this matchup probably bad. So I, w I wouldn't recommend to bring them. So because against Loth and Seagard, these guys struggle a lot. So let's come to my opponent. And we have here a front line of white lines of Grace, four groups. And I think white lines of Grace are in this matchup uh, the best pick for the infantry because um, uh, you don't need a lot of armor piercing damage against the, high, uh, against the Tomb Kings. And these guys, the price for these guys is 800 credits. So in my opinion, quite decent. You can bring a lot of them. But overall, I would say maybe more spe spearmen would be better against all these large entities from the Tomb Kings. Then we have Law and Seagard with shields. So very expensive over here. And also, in my opinion, a very good pick. As I said, especially against all these large entities from the Tomb Kings. This is a very good decision in my opinion. Then we have a prince on a sun dragon and far, far away, hidden in the forest. Now leaving the forest over here, a silver helms with shield. I didn't saw them and far, far away, uh, Illyrian reavers, Illyrian river archers. I also didn't see them. So, but anyway, let's start over here and can already see I tried with my skeleton horseman to flag, flank my opponent, but let's start with the charge in over here. And I forget to say I also brought two groups of Ushabti, in my opinion very 
important in this matchup, as I said, because um, because um, you need a lot of armor piercing damage and especially they they should perform quite superior against these wide lines of craze so as i said i would bring more spearmen from the high elves especially to perform against guys like these ushapti over here you can see my necros things running through the front line because i saw his prince landed on with his star dragon directly on my skeleton horseman so I sent it directly my Kai Queen Kalida and my Necro Sphinx to attack his prince and this is a really dangerous situation you can see how much damage the prince already took from the Necro Sphinx from the High Queen Kalida as I said the High Queen Kalida also performing really superior against large entities uh, enemy lords and monsters and all that stuff really good performance you can see he's nearly dead now He's, he should be poisoned, I think. Um, as I said, the Heikniash, he's, he's poisoned. The speed is reduced. So this is uh, this was very good. He's shaking now. And uh, we're out of shot. So meanwhile, um, I, as I said, I didn't notice the in cavalry because they were hidden. And the silver helms were really able to break uh, to uh, yeah to um, do some rear charges in my back line but as i said i had these i uh, have these two guards with halberds in my back line performing really superior and also you can see against the uh, silver helms of course see another rear charge over here but as i said the tomb kings with halberds performing really superior over here now my um necro sphinx joining you can see um his um this prince on the star uh, on the sun dragon is dead now as i said a uh, really dangerous situation for with the necro sphinx and my high queen kalida so he wasn't able to yeah to get away so also my tomb scorpion causing a lot of dumb damage against the both of Seagat in the back line the white lines of grace getting raised completely as i said this was cause of these Ushapti over here. These Ushapti really performance performance against the white lines of Christ is really superior. But this was a um, as I said, I would bring more spearmen if I if I play play with the high elves against the tomb kings. We have a very healthy group of silver helms over here. Again charging into my um, Tomb Scorpions, uh, not Tomb Scorpions, uh, sorry, Tomb Guards with Halberts. And now, of course, they get more and more damage, the leadership drops. But even though I have a very healthy um, Tomb Scorpion left. But in the back line over here, my, my, my opponent collected some units over here. Um, of course, just a few white lines of craze, but a lot of Loth and Sea Guard. But overall, the balance of power shifting more and more in my favor even if we has here over here in the back line Illyrian Weaver Archers but I'm not sure about this decision because uh, Illyrian Weaver Archers causing nearly no armor piercing missile damage so I'm not sure I wouldn't bring them in my opinion of course as I always say you don't need a lot of armor piercing against the Tomb Kings but against the monsters uh, the monsters are very heavily armored. I think the Ushapti, for example, have an amount of armor of 100. So they are comp your, so missiles without missile da uh, armor piercing missile damage are nearly useless, you can say. So overall, I would say you can see the performance. Just one group killed about 80, uh, 80, uh, 80 units. The other groups are completely useless over here. I would say two groups of white lines of grace, maybe. Or you can also put four groups of spearmen and more for example two groups of uh, phoenix guards so you do your absolute um, anti-large build with spearmen and phoenix guard in combination so then uh, the tomb king player really struggled with all the large entities as i said the white lines of grace against ushapti completely useless also the tomb guards with halberds performing superior against these guys so against all other stuff the white lines are crazy in favor of course the, the slice and dice the spearmen but also skeleton spearmen should be able to hold the line for some time 
Ne Nekarn Warriors over here in this matchup completely useless. Leave this out. Also Skeleton Horseman. This was not a bad. This was not a good decision over here. But anyway, thank you for tuning in to this episode. See you next time and have a nice evening.